Biotechnology itself is a very powerful technology. It scares many people because it is what we are made of, because we're playing with the substance of us, our DNA, what makes us human. I think we need to you know, really think through the, the consequences, the actions of the work that we do with biotech. It has an incredible ability to transform this world in a positive way, to feed people, to house people, to heal people from illness. I am playing God as much as any computer programmer does, or a mechanic, or an engineer who builds planes, makes us fly in the sky when we don't have wings. I think that humanity builds technology, and I'm just another builder like everyone else. I began reading science fiction as a child. I grew up in the inner city of Miami, and I was inspired by a lot of the things that I saw. Even through poverty, I saw that there was a way through, which was through technology, and I thought that we could actually build that. So uh, it was my quest to, to kind of start a genetics and figure out a way to do that. I was fascinated by nanotechnology, building with molecules, uh, and the promise that genetics and nanotechnology and artificial intelligence had. So right now, right here, we're, we're actually at IndieBio. It's the largest biotech accelerator in the world. We really focus on solving some of the world's biggest challenges that affect seven plus billion people on this planet through uh, biotechnology. And so we use biology, technology, and artificial intelligence and robotics to try and find ways to develop new products and services to help people. Biotechnology products have been in our foods for more than 20 years. Today, everyone eats cheese, right? But, but very few people realize that some of the enzymes that are used in cheese are microbially derived. For people who, have, who are diabetics and who use insulin, again, they've been using this technology for over 20 years uh, to, to stay healthy every single day. And so this is a technology that we've brought to bear because of biotechnology and because of GMOs. And so I would say that it's not new, it's just we're, we're coming up with new applications. So when we look at petrochemical products, so a lot of the oils that we use, a lot of the cosmetics products we use, could all be made with biology. Same for a lot of the foods and flavorings. When it comes to industrial uh, agriculture, replacing the use of animals, instead of getting gelatin from pigs, skins, and dead animals, we could actually just brew it in, in vats. Same for eggs and growing cultured meats. The applications are almost endless. I would say pretty much every industry can be heavily impacted on a positive note. My personal aim is that we get there through biology to feed, close, house, and keep, keep over 7 billion people on this planet healthy in an efficient uh, and sustainable manner. Every time there's a new technology, we see these kind of hype cycles, these boom-bust cycles. Biotech has a lot of them. So we saw it uh, in the 2000s. Alongside the dot-com boom, there was the genome boom. That was the first time that one human genome had actually been fully sequenced. We understood the book of life of us. And that created a, an entirely new hype cycle. Lots of companies were created, most failed. We see it repeatedly with different types of cycles. No doubt, we'll see it with CRISPR technology, which is a way of precisely gene editing. We end up seeing is these hype cycles are preceded by real advances in technology and real products and services that impact people's lives. So even though we have hype cycles, these are really meaningful technologies that move forward. It's just not every company that competes uh, succeeds in, in moving those, those products forward towards commercialization. I think it's the duty and responsibility of both scientists and biotech startups to go out and talk to the general public and talk to them about what they're doing and be as transparent as possible. That's one of the reasons why at IndieBio, we actually built our lab with a glass wall so that when people walk in, even though we can't let them in the lab, they can see what's going on in the lab. Giving people the tools, democratizing access to the tools to the general public actually would see, I believe, uh, a spur of innovation. Today, too few people have access and knowledge about how to use biotechnology to help themselves and their broader community. I'd like to expand those tools and the understanding and knowledge through DIY Bio. There was one thing that I could change about the world. I would give everyone access to a DIY Bio and Maker Lab and the internet because then I think people could build solutions for themselves. One of the biggest challenges and one of the biggest critiques of capitalism is that a rising tide has not risen all the boats, right? So, so that's, that's been a huge problem, not just in, in, in the West and developed economies, but in emerging economies as well. We still, still see plenty of social problems, plenty of environmental and sustainability problems. In fact, even more acute in the developing countries. My dream and my vision is to see millions of biotech startups flourish, like IT startups that flourish throughout the world. There are incredible minds out there who are just waiting to create new products and maybe, maybe products that save you or me, you know, from, from cancer, from diseases of old age, Alzheimer's, and, and create new foods that we might love, new biomaterials that might get us into space or allow us to do new things.